<laughs> Thanks, man. That was a solid hand clap. I'm back, y'all. Remember me? Yeah. yeah. I'm Jesse Lane. Glad to be here. So how many of you know your first $1,000 is going to come from you working hard? Your first $100,000 is going to come from you working smart. Your first $1 million is going to come from you building a team to work harder and smarter than you. So the ultimate goal here is to have a business that works for you. But first, you guys have to understand, I think a lot of you do, you have to understand what financial quadrant that you're in. How many of you know about the ESPI? Let's go, Matt. Yeah, got some head nods. Okay, you guys have all read Robert Kiyosaki. Your dad, poor dad? Yeah. yeah. So, but also the cash flow quadrant. So the cash flow quadrant um, is another book by Robert Kiyosaki that I would heavily recommend reading along with How to Retire Young, Retire Rich. Uh, what's another Robert book? Why A students work for B students and why C students work for the government. <laughs> That's literally the title of the book. So you have to understand which quadrant you're in. And some of you might be in the E quadrant right now as an employee, which is time equals money. So you can't ever make more money than the time you put in. There's only, you know, 100 and 68 hours or whatever in a week, but you can only work so much. So there's, there's, a, there's a cap. Here's a tagline that an employee might say. I need a safe and secure job with benefits. Okay, this is the words coming out of their mouth, out of the heart the mouth speaks. A core value is security. An employee wants security. A self-employed person, this might be a real estate agent, it could be a doctor, a lawyer, um, anyone where, again, time equals money. They don't employ people, they don't have a system that works for them, they have them that works for them. They own, not a business, they own a job. What does job stand for, J-O-B? Just over broke. So, I had a self-employed tagline is, if you wanna do it right, you have to do it yourself. And their core value is perfectionism, which, thank God, maybe not my tattoo artist, but hopefully, maybe your, your tattoo artist, that's, he's a self-employed. Perfectionism, right? Your dentist, your doctor, your surgeon. Thank God for us people. A business owner's tagline, the B quadrant, is I'm looking for the smartest people to hire for my company. And their core value is hiring the best people. One of, one of their core values. Now, there's the I quadrant. So, well, the B quadrant, there's employees equal money. The I quadrant, money equals money, okay? Because they're investors. I'm looking for a good investment. That's a tagline. A core value is making their money work for them. So if you wanna be an entrepreneur, you have to know that you're an entrepreneur at the core. And that's why I'm leading this off with just this concept, because you have to know that you're a born entrepreneur. Like Gary Vee, him and I share a little bit similar upbringing where he was slinging baseball cards, making deals with the kids at eight years old. Similar to me, I had my mom drive me around to uh, people's doors in the neighborhood. And I, would, I would knock on the door and my mom's in the car. And I'm like, answer the door, hey, I'm Jesse Lane and I have this book of candy for my school. And like, I would sell them to buy candy for my school. And I was a top sales guy at school. And I was like 11. And then I was like 10 or 11, same age. And I bought a vending machine. I, pay, I, I think I, I somehow earned $100 or $200, something like that. And I bought this vending machine. Then I went to Costco and I bought Reese's and I bought Dorita, whatever the stuff was. And I put it in my parents' real estate office. And I was stoked when I came and I said, whoa, I made these quarters. I didn't have to be here. This is awesome. At 14, I, I used to buy and sell wild horses. That was one of my first businesses in Texas. How many of you here have seen my documentary? Yeah? Okay, cool, so half the room. If not, it's called The First 30 Years, it's on my channel. So I would buy them and I would add value, break them. I got bucked off a lot, it was not easy, it was hard, but I made it happen. I also had lawn care business, like when I first started, I would just drive my mower around and knock on people's doors and say, hey, you could be doing something else, let me mow your lawn, give me 60 bucks. Also, walking sticks, never stopped hustling, right? So who here, I'm just curious, raise your hands, was born or a young age had an entrepreneurial spirit. Nice. So we're in the right room. But I want to emphasize that if you're a craftsman, you have to know that at the core. 
So if your passion is to work with wood, you have to know that at the core. If you're an employee, you have to know that at the core. So don't try to change who you are. Everyone is a genius, but if you try to judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it's stupid. And I was the fish in school, and there were the monkeys climbing the tree, and it was like, ha, you suck, you're getting Fs, Ds, even Cs, hardly. I couldn't fit into the box, and I got kicked out. Let's get into the business basics. What you have to know, there's business licenses, there's insurances according to your local jurisdiction. So call your city and find out what you need to do. There's accounting, it is vital to the success of your, success of your company. You need to dedicate time to accounting to get the numbers straight and make sure that they stay straight or else you're not gonna last very long. Then you can again delegate that like we talked about yesterday. But it's about seeing the bigger picture, it's about working with people, there's a lot to business. One thing, a major thing of business basics, is sales. Sales is the lifeblood flowing through the veins of your business. To be a construction business owner, you have to be able to sell. If you can't sell, you're gonna have a hard time starting your own business. Maybe you can start it, but how are you gonna keep it running, right? You can hire out salespeople, but most of the time, the owner is the leader in sales. Again, like this is the last hammer that I'm gonna put down. Eventually, you guys want a trail of hammers, right? That you keep, look at all those hammers that I've dropped, you know? And the last thing might be sales, but again, do what's best for you and what you're best at, but sales is the lifeblood. So read books on sales. Um, read Sell or Be Sold by Grant Cardone. That was a huge aspect of me learning about sales. Like for example, when I used to convince my parents to stop for ice cream after they said no. <laughs> so. Getting anything that you want in life involves some sort of sales process, even from when you're a kid. Business is people, so become a people person. Life is people. When we get to the end of our life, it's not like, oh, money, money, money. Dude, it's about people. And that's why I'm here with all you guys, because I love all you guys so much. And your network is your net worth. It's the number one point in life is people. It's people are the key to happiness, fulfillment, and major success. So learn how to communicate with people and coordinate with people to accomplish big things in your business. So here's one idea. When I first started my business, I had a couple 1099 people and just a few W9 employees, but I had some 1099 people, like maybe a bookkeeper. We talked about someone over here with book kind of outsourcing a, a bookkeeper and you can do that. You don't have to hire this $80,000 W2 situation. But some pillars in your company would be sales, admin, bookkeeping, like general labor, superintendents, project managers, C-suite, the executive level, eventually you'll get up to that point. So when I first started, so like you may say, who, who should I hire first? What I did was I hired a super slash PM. He was more kind of make like a super, 80, 90% a super. I was the PM, I was the sales guy, I was the bookkeeper, I was the marketer, I was the pretty much everything else in the first bunch of years. But the thing about him was he could be on site and I could be out selling and doing, doing everything else. But he was low cost and one thing Bill said, and there's this conundrum of, I remember yesterday was, just get that nice big guy, but what if you can't afford that? You know what I'm saying? So you might only be able to afford the $40,000 guy, which is what this, this guy was to me, he's not with me anymore because some people are only good for a certain season. You know, you have to know like which tool to put where. And so now I have the team that hopefully will be with me forever because they're awesome people and they're making lots of money, you know. And, but this guy didn't and that's why you can only see half of his face. <laughs> it got me what I needed at the time, but I was still watching over every little thing that he did and it was exhausting, but he was cheap but it was somebody, you know, to go out and be on site and let the subs in. Be careful how you handle your reputation also. When you're hiring, you have to make sure that this person is representing your company the right way. So people will always be a huge part of your success and always treat people with respect, especially when I had to let this guy go, I had to kind of wait until it was good for him. Maybe his family's in a bad spot, you know, maybe his personal situation, blah, blah, blah. his car just got broken into, not at the right time, even though I know it's really not gonna work out in the long term. As an entrepreneur, things are gonna go wrong in your construction business. <laughs> you have to realize that everything is your fault, which is a crazy statement, because you're the owner, it's your business. You're signing off on all the mistakes that people are gonna make on, on your behalf. So 
it's risk and reward. And you have to, you, when you wake up, you have to realize that you hired an estimator and you're trusting him. You hired a project manager and you're trusting him. And there's risk associated with that, but you can also make major money when things go right. So you have to be willing to accept this fact of the risk to make the big reward. So it's all about being an amazing leader, putting in amazing systems, and then finding amazing people to work those systems. And understand that the harder you work, the least amount of money that you're gonna make. So the people that work the smartest make the most amount of money, okay? Learn to delegate effectively and build systems according to how you figure out the best way to do things so other people can take your place. That's the ultimate goal of entrepreneurship. So what is your role as an entrepreneur? How do you be a construction business owner? Your role is to train, coach, teach, and guide people and to build systems. That's it, and to make sales. But those, that's what you do on a daily basis. It's your job to do those things. It's all about the people and getting it into their brain how you want it done. Once you realize that it's not just about you anymore, it's about other people running your business with the systems that you've built. That's the true key to success. So understand each step of your business. You are the master business builder and then find the qualified people. So how do you keep employees fulfilled? Because I'm talking a lot about people, talking about systems, you guys get it. But how do we keep employees fulfilled? It's about what are they looking for? And each person, see all these people? They're all different people. They all, imagine a cogwheel on top of their head, and this one spins this way, and this one spins this way. Well, this one, that's my brain, it goes this, you know? So you have to know what keeps them fulfilled. Is it money, status, challenging work? Take a picture of this. Job security, a fancy title, a trustworthy boss, recognition. Is it the type of work that they're doing? Is it the working conditions that they're in? Is it the culture of the company? Is it a flexible work schedule? Is it getting more PTO? So every day you wake up as an entrepreneur, you're trusting these people. You're banking on the mindset and the actions of these employees. You're trusting them to do the right thing. You're trusting and verifying that they aren't missing details. If they mess up, they're still gonna get their what? Paycheck. But you take the losses, right? So it's not just when you started your business that you take the risk, it's every day that you wake up as an entrepreneur that you take the risk. When hiring people, try to find sixes and sevens. If this is zero and this is 10, you guys are the tens, right? And I don't think you could ever find other tens that really have the experience that you do that are crazy enough to get on the bull of building a business. I just hopped on here one day and I was like, I didn't even think about it. I was just like, okay. And then it starts bucking. I'm like, oh crap. Oh, well everyone's looking. Oh, Jesse started a business. And I'm like, I better just hang on. Okay, whoa, all right. And then let's put some, okay, let's figure this out. So it's like more streamlined. And then I started doing the systems thing, but I always think of this bull analogy for some reason. It's just like crazy wild ride. But try to find those sixes and sevens, maybe eights, you know? that can work for your business. And I think I have everyone that I have is in this up top here, you know, really close to what I do. And then some of them might even become tens. I think Mark and Ron and those guys are gonna, are tens or are gonna become tens. You wanna get rid of these people, you know, down here on the, on the graph that is blank. But anyone below three, twos and threes, just get rid of them. They're, they're, gonna, they're gonna drain. Mark, I just call, I called you a 10, bro. You're becoming a 10. So, <laughs> so, so you wanna get rid of the threes and the fours quickly, but try not to hire them in the first place, which is what this internal systems thing and blah, blah, blah. You can build those quizzes, which is what we've done. The culture fit quiz, the personality quiz, priority rankings, construction knowledge quiz. Those are all things that you can, you can get for your company. You can tell a lot about an employee before they even start. You don't want to just hire everybody and ah, well, we'll see how, you know, and then two or three days we'll fire them. Cause then it's like, uh, 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 you know, figure out beforehand the personality. Do they understand construction, etc. It's your job to be the visionary. You need to cast vision to your team, articulate exactly where you see the company headed quarterly, monthly, yearly, or in, on a, even on a weekly basis. We have a meeting every Monday at 10. And sometimes on those meetings throughout the, the months, I'll come with, hey guys, this is where we're going. These are some numbers. Here's some satisfied clients. There's a big win. Here's a big loss. We talk about it. 
So it's your job to cast that vision and articulate that, hold people accountable to those goals. So everything we talk about in those meetings gets documented and then we hold people accountable. And so there's financial goals, there's budget goals, there's project specific goals, there's timing goals, there's inspection goals, like no fail inspections or something like that. And those are all bonuses that are come with the internal spreadsheet thing or template website thing. And you wanna create gamification as much as possible. You want to create a, a goal board, and this could be this could be a Google Sheet that you share viewer access. It could be that simple. You just say Google Sheet, here's our goals or whatever, and and create kind of like a game. Like, hey, whoever does this many daily logs before 5 p.m. or whatever it is gets X. And I used to do that. We we have we've had a daily log award. Like when people weren't doing it, I'm like, you know what? You get 500 bucks every quarter. Whoever has like the most accurate detail, Mark won every month, so we just stopped doing it. But. <laughs> it's your job to create the culture, right? And so that's one thing that I did in my company by, you know, even that example is, that's a culture item. Everything's culture. You, as the business owner, set the tone of your company. And the business is a direct reflection of you. So how can you go from a construction worker to a construction business owner? The first step is to stop picking up the tools. So that phrase can be translated to anything in the company, and we've talked about that. Um, it doesn't have to be actual construction tools. Are you doing your own bookkeeping? Are you doing your own payroll? Are you creating all of your own pay applications? Are you doing all of your own invoices? Are you scheduling the project inspections? Are you doing all the project management? Are you managing the project site? Are you calling all the subcontractors, etc.? So it comes back to the cash flow quadrant. Where are you naturally gifted? Are you built to be an employee? Or do you enjoy building these systems and managing other people, which is the hard, one of the hardest things in life to do, is managing other people, if they, especially if they don't have the right training. If you're a craftsman at heart, blah, 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 we talked about that. But just know this, if you're an E and you really aren't a B, it's gonna be extremely frustrating and you're, you're gonna give up. Because that's the 90% that you hear about, or even if 97%, whatever the, some people have different percentages of what businesses actually make it right? It's because a lot of the employees had an entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial seizure or whatever. You want to make sure that you are the right core value, knowing who you are at the core. So the biggest part of getting off swinging the hammer is understanding how to get your point across to various different people as you learn how to coach them. You are the coach and eventually you'll be the owner of the league watching from up top in the box. I was swinging a hammer for the first few years of my business. I would say after the year two or three that you guys should be off the tools. Really, you should be off the tools hopefully in year one, but you should be really hiring people, having the, built the money up to do that because you have a lot more percent probably if you're doing all the work yourself, you're keeping more percent. They're gonna do one job at a time because you're only one person. Entrepreneurship is about hiring the right people to take your place because management is a full-time job. So now I have a senior executive staff, a C-suite, and my goal is to manage them and make sure everything is getting done right beneath them. So I don't necessarily need to go talk to the field guys or get all involved with, I, I, I minimally go out to my job sites. I'm not necessarily saying don't go to your job sites. I'm just saying my, I trust my team and definitely trust my C-suite managing the team. And so of course the daily logs help with photos, videos and all that stuff on Bill Trend. So my ultimate goal is to have a completely turnkey business that runs whether or not I'm there or not. And I would say for me personally, that might take another five to seven years. Maybe at year 15 or 18 of the company, I'm at year almost nine. I think maybe I can get to that point where it's just like, we're good, you know? But I believe it'll be worth the grind. So if you're just starting out how to start a construction company, you gotta start with opening, a lot of you are already past this point, so I'll buzz, but separate business banking account. Of course, you guys all know that. You have to keep your personal transactions out of your business and vice versa. Everyone knows that, correct? So then you gotta choose a business name. A lot of you already know that. What are some of your business names? Silverstone Construction. Mastermind. Mastermind. Love it, what else? From the ground up, I like that. That's the new one, right? That's perfect. One more. Sunshine State. So unfortunately, mine's J Lane Construction. <laughs> you think I'll have a little harder time maybe selling that one day? Maybe. But ultimately, it doesn't matter because it's all about building your brand, right? So if it's Silver, whatever, in Sunshine State, you, you want to build the brand so when people think about 
commercial, general contractor, they think J-Line Construction. When they think of, what do you do, Sunshine State? General contractor. And you're here in Jacksonville, right? Yes. When you're at your bank, getting your business checking account, get a business credit card, start building business credit. And then that you can do your LLC from there as well. This is a great book by Garrett Sutton. This is in that Rich Dad kind of vibe, Robert's brand or whatever. But anything, any questions you have, just read this book, LLC, S Corp, C Corp, how do I tax it? My LLC, it flows through to my personal because I set it up as an S corporation. It's taxed as an S corporation, but it's an LLC. So depending on what trade you specialize in, definitely make sure you're licensed. And you just heard from JD, and each state, each county has different rules and regulations. So research that, call the local building department. If you're shooting to be a general contractor, not just maybe your drywall license or you know, framing or concrete, then the stakes are higher and you gotta complete rigorous testing and all of you guys know that. But also, a huge point, make sure that you're hiring licensed subcontractors. Almost got burnt, real bad, really bad. The Lord had a, a sovereign saving <laughs> of my company. It just mechanical, electrical, plumbing, roofing. There's trades that are sub-trades that need to be licensed and it's your job as a general to verify that they're licensed. And so we have a system for that and Builder Trend does help with that, but our system helps with that. By the way, Dalton, I know you bought the, the template, the, congratulations, and Ryan Bittner just bought it, and he had to go to his flight, but you guys will all get it probably tomorrow because I, I have to do it on my computer. <laughs> but I'm excited for you, man. I use QuickBooks Online. There's many accounting softwares out there, but like we talked about earlier with this line in the middle and Builder Trend and then QuickBooks talks to Builder Trend, it can bridge that divide. But make sure you're getting QuickBooks Online because you, it literally syncs to Builder Trend, but it also syncs your credit card transactions, all of them right there. You don't have to like manually input them like QuickBooks desktop. It just, you just say, hey, it goes to this cost code, this job, and then boom, and then it just flows to Builder Trend. You add the receipt that they put in on the form on your new internal systems website. So business building is all about streamlining. Your accounting software is gonna give you vital reports like profit and loss, balance sheets, project specific reports, AP and AR, accounts payable, accounts receivable. You can also manage your chart of accounts, categorize credit card expenses like we just talked about. You can even use this to manage payroll. I personally have a leasing company handle my payroll. So they do my 941s, my 944s, my RT6s, and they pay them each week on direct deposit. So I'd recommend getting a payroll company or a leasing company for payroll because I used to do it all myself. Like you guys know, I did everything myself, which I've quickly got away from, which is my whole brand, like streamline your business. But I did do it on QuickBooks Online for a while and I would do the quarterly reports and the unemployment form once a year and the RT6 and the 944s, which quarterly, monthly, all that stuff. So I wanna to touch on this formula. Gross sales. Gross sales minus your cost of goods sold, right? Anything that's directly rated, related to the job, okay? This is job costs. Gross sales minus costs of goods sold equals what? Come on, give me a shout. Yeah. Gross profit! So gross profit minus your overhead, rent, software fees, office rent, utilities, office expenses, pens, papers, printers, desks, chairs, ping pong tables. We have one in our office. Gas, vehicle maintenance, insurance, bank fees, cell phones, computers, company shirts, continuing education, legal fees, recruiting fees, licensing, marketing, company meals and events, your website. The internal systems website is a write-off. I'm serious, it's a business expense, it's overhead. So all that equals net profit. And what do you do with your net profit? You pay taxes on it, yeah. <laughs> So as a business owner, you need insurance. You need general liability, workers comp, auto insurance, maybe bonding, payment performance bond, bid bond, okay, for larger jobs. So you need a really good insurance agent that understands construction companies. Get a construction specific one. If you're a subcontractor, you need to add the GC as additional insured to your policy. And if you're a GC, you need to ask your subs to add you as additional insured to their policy, which is the same thing I just said, just different perspectives. <laughs> so you also need a workers' compensation and policy for who? Your employees. Can I have workers' comp on me? Yes. Of course. Do I have to have workers' comp on me? No. 
Exactly. You guys get it. You, the owner, can be exempt. Can I make uh, Jose, the employee, workers' comp exempt? No. No. Okay, cool. Make sure you're also paying yourself a reasonable wage. The IRS determines or requires that you, should, you need to pay yourself a, a reasonable wage. I've actually made the same amount of money out of my company. Um, just a reasonable wage, I think it's $65,000. <laughs> I should probably pay myself double that, but like, why would I want to pay extra taxes? So, marketing and sales, okay? <laughs> this is where your business is formed in the womb. This is where it all starts. You, you, you start with this. This is the baby steps of your business. You won't get sales without what? Marketing, exactly. Marketing leads to sales. Sales gets spit over to the estimating department. The estimating department spits to your, your project management. Project management spits to your super. And then your super gets those client reviews, or you do, and then it all leads back to marketing. So you wanna start with marketing. We talk, we've heard a lot about branding and marketing online, but you wanna start making it, just use your phone, your iPhone. <laughs> YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn. Aaron's blowing up on, on TikTok. It's just cool, she picked a niche. It was like wedding planning, which you're gonna bait and switch now. But then she gets hundreds of thousands of views. And they're like, all these likes, all these comments, like more than me ever had, you know? <laughs> it's like within two weeks on, on TikTok, she just, Pow! it's really cool seeing her brainstorm about the content and stuff too. So you should be on all these platforms <laughs> making quality content. Be the thought leader in your industry. Provide insight, provide value. Use your phone to grab little clips. I did it with, yeah, it was Carrie. I grabbed your phone at the brewery last night. I was like, this is how you make content. This is what Carrie's about to do. You just put it on selfie mode. Because what we did was we went to your Instagram and it had a bunch of pictures of drywall being finished. I'm like, bro, where's your, where's your face? <laughs> He's like, well, I'm taking pictures of my job. Guys, it's, they're buying you. They're not buying the drywall, okay? It's a personality. It's a trust level. They know me before they call me because it's my face, it's my personality on the screen that they're watching. Make sure your website is epic. It's the online brochure. It's the first thing client sees. It's the first impression of your business. It's your online billboard. It needs to look amazing. It's like an online magazine. People need to know you before they call you. Include photos of projects, reviews from past clients, develop an amazing logo if you don't already have one. People need to come to your website and say to themselves, how could I not hire this company? Well, what if you don't have past jobs? What if you're just starting out? Maybe you work for someone else until you're 100% comfortable in your own abilities to complete a project and then go to Thumbtack, Craigslist, Home Advisor, Angie's List, etc. until you complete enough small little projects that turn out perfect, then put those beautiful photos on your website, get five-star Google reviews. Of obviously, it starts by you doing great work. You have very happy clients. Generate a link that brings them straight to the review section, ask for that review, make it super easy for them. That's sales. I'm gonna sell a client, I'm spending their five minutes doing a review, so I'm gonna make it easy. Push the button, bro. Hit five, give them a little starter. Hey, J Lane Construction was great, da, da, da and they can fill it in. Whatever it takes to make it easy for them, that goes with using DocuSign or something like that. For a contract, you wanna sell a client, then I'm a DocuSign and be like, hey, just click the button, bro. Then you get those, you wanna film interviews like this with your client. Just grab a little DSLR camera and film your clients. It could be the Thumbtack client. Maybe you do a $15,000 job on the Thumbtack thing, or maybe you guys are past that point and you already have a project, but maybe you want to go from residential to commercial, what do you do? I only have residential. I've talked to a lot of you guys in person about doing it in tandem. Here's commercial, here's residential. Don't just kill residential right away if you've never done one commercial project. Take and do one to five commercial projects and leave residential chug in, and then eventually, okay, you get some calls, kind of see if you can get that off like that, and then you're just onwards and upwards with commercial, okay? Boom. <laughs> So, man, the first Brazil's boxing center was the first job I ever did, six, a commercial job I ever did. It was 6,000 square foot commercial renovation, and I filmed the client testimonial video, then the phone rang for commercial. This is the number one thing that has brought me new clients. There's no reason that they wouldn't want to call you, so this is the gold that will bring your clients in the door. I've also, when I first started, I did about six, seven months of SEO, search engine optimization, to get your backlink set up, to get everything 
plug in the right way towards your Google My Business listing, which Google My Business, if you don't have that, there's so many contractors I talk to, I consult them all across the world. And I'm like, bro, let me see your website. All right, cool. I search general contractor in Alabama or uh, the specifics, um, you know, the area. And they're not even on there. They're like, oh yeah, I'm, I meant to set that up. I'm like, they're like, I can't get any clients. I'm like, <laughs> this will get you on the map getting your Google My Business set up, then this is a really cool hack. Check this out. Have your clients or future clients follow you online. Add them as friends on Facebook. Connect with them on LinkedIn. Follow them on Instagram and hope that they'll follow you back. Engage with them online. These people are gonna see the YouTube videos that you make, then you share that on your personal Facebook. You'll be like, hey, look what my company's doing. And you have, okay, five likes. You have 10 likes, all right, cool. <coughs> But that person who didn't like was that developer, right? And he's like, and, and then you, and you run into him at the event, whatever, or at the coffee shop. Man, I've seen your YouTube videos and the things that you're doing. You're doing some, you're doing some big things. I saw you did that commercial build out. I got to build out. You did a commercial build out. Can you build me a ground up 6,000 square foot situation? Heck yeah. <laughs> That's how the business is built. Network, network, network. So you want to be networking digitally and in person with property managers. This is commercial mindset. Property managers, real estate brokers, developers, architects, engineers, structural, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and civil engineers. These are people that are going to refer you to new clients, right? For example, I built a dessert shop in a strip center and we did a really fantastic job. She was a raving video, a raving review. We even came back and fixed small things after the fact. Mark can attest to that. That guy has referred us to 15 probably build outs in the same strip center. Then they built a whole new thing, which I'm mad I didn't build it, but they had, before they met me. But he wants to talk to me about building the next ground up strip center. But then that one, we're gonna do all, we're, you know, he gave us our name to all those people in the strip center. So even after that, I brought him J Lane cookies, J Lane koozies, <laughs> mouse pads, shirts, job site signs, pens, metal business cards, brochures, digital brochures, videos on your websites. All those things are a part of your brand. I didn't bring him all those things, but I brought him cookies and he was stoked. Then that's why he got this, I got the second thing. He's like, oh yeah, Jay Lane. Oh, I was like, mm, Jay Lane tastes good. <laughs> they just leave a good taste in my mouth, you know? So it's all about brand, okay? Brand, brand, brand. Alex talked about it. Everyone's talked about it. Bring those things to those people, the brokers, the architects, the past clients, the future clients, the developers. If you're not designing, it's a new word, Hashtag. Hop on Fiverr, Upwork, get that 1099 situation going with building your brand. They can help with all those little things, okay? You know what I'm saying? The business cards, the, all that stuff, brochures, even website. So what does the word brand mean to you guys? I'll tell you. It's about developing a reputation that's strictly focused on your niche. So for me, it's commercial general contracting. It's written on my truck. You guys saw my truck. It doesn't say, I do, I'm a general contractor. Well, then people make all these bathroom renovation calls. I already have too many of those. They just sit in my inbox in my lead sheet. So effective branding for your construction business has less to do with your logo or advertising campaigns. It has everything to do with how you connect, serve, and relate to your clients. You want to hire the right people that only do commercial projects or whatever your niche is. If you do residential, develop a brand for that. And then follow your clients on Facebook. We went over all that stuff. Become the top rated in your area. You'll blow up when you're the top rated. Believe me, I know. Become known for being the best. Get really good at tenant improvements or commercial renovations. Mike does all of these tenant improvements and he helps the people know if I, want, if I want to open up a new business, I'm coming to Mike. Because in Arizona, Phoenix? Phoenix, Arizona. He's the guy to talk to because he's going to get me through the problem. There's a problem. I don't know how to do, uh, I don't know how to open up a donut shop. I'm going to call Mike if I'm in Arizona. I'm going to call Jay Lane if I'm in Jacksonville <laughs> or anywhere in Florida. So, but you might ask, finding jobs, do I use bidding platforms, I Square Foot, Construction Journal, Blue Book, etc.? No. <laughs> I've tried it. For me, it doesn't work. I just feel like if it's on there, it's already too late, you know? What's your guys' experience with that? I'm curious. It doesn't, work. it doesn't work. Yeah. So it's just like, I want clients that see my value and call me because they want to work with Jay Lane. 
They know who Jesse is. I, they say my name, Jesse. My business is Jay Lane. They say, I want, I want to work with Jesse, you know? But of course, my team helps with all that stuff now and getting out of the, anyway. So, but the clients see your value and I just feel like if it's on here, it's too late because everyone's bidding on it and you want the people that see your value. So, one mistake I made when I was first starting my construction business was, and this is, this is not the actual picture, but I made the mistake of this extra expense of getting an office too quick. Okay, raise your hand if you're under two years in your business. Keep it up. Do you have an office? No, like none of you guys, yeah, okay. I mean, and that's probably good in your first couple of years because what's wrong with your house? Well, fortunately, I didn't have screaming babies. And I still don't, <laughs> not yet. But that was a huge benefit to me starting my business. What I did, of course, work from home, but what I did was I got a virtual office. And I still have that today. I've had it for nine years. They answer all my phone calls. Man, if your main business number is your cell phone, you got problems. It should be, like mine's 904 or 500 lane, and it goes to intelligent office. And there's all these ladies and some guys that sit there and go, okay, is it residential, commercial? If it's residential, they throw in the trash. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> they say, how many square feet? What's the address? What's your budget? Sometimes, a lot of it's bl blank, but sometimes like, you know, they'll put it a little in there. If it says 30 grand, I'm not gonna click it. But um, then there's a description of what it is. So if it says commercial or multifamily, there's three things. Residential, commercial, multifamily. If it says multifamily, I'm calling back. If it says commercial, I'm more than likely gonna call them back depending on what's written. If they're like, well, it's commercial, but we need help, uh, $5,000 is our budget, and we just gotta get a permit because our last contractor messed everything up and the city's mad at us, and we gotta get our certificate of use, and I'm like, no, no. That is just not my cup of tea. My minimum, it says on my website, is $100,000, but I like quarter million to 750. I will consistently make 30 to 40% on my $500 to $700,000 jobs. On my quarter million dollar jobs, some th a lot of those jobs I've made 20 to 30 grand, which I don't know, what, that's a low percentage. Less than 10%, whatever. But on the million plus, million to five million, man, it's like way less percent. I don't know what it is. It's just my experience and I'm just sharing that with you guys. It's something that I've picked up, I don't know. But I'm, I've crushed it with those five to seven hundred thousand dollar jobs. So consider getting a virtual office. People can't hunt you down. Register your business with that address. People can't find you at home, right? You're work, you might work from home and people, you can meet your team on Google Meet. Maybe you have one superintendent, project manager. Superintendent's running around job. You don't need an office for that, running around for jobs. When you become a business owner, you have to know what you're doing. <coughs> Knowledge, right? Like Ty Lopez in his garage. Knowledge! This is my Lambo, you know? And like, he's trying to sell something. So if you're gonna be a carpenter, you gotta know how to frame the house. You gotta be a great framer. If you're gonna be a general contractor, you need to have solid working understanding of every single aspect of the project. Site work, concrete, masonry, metals, framing, windows and doors, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, roofing, structural engineering, reading and understand the architect's plans, the structural plans, the civil plans. Some aspects beyond construction specific knowledge are that you need to know in the general contracting world are like communicating with the city, pulling permits, filing notices of commencement, obtaining lien releases, building a schedule of values, doing your pay applications, paying your taxes, don't forget about that one, insurance audits, and then entrepreneurship skills in general, which is kind of everything I talked about prior. Develop your processes. It's the most important thing. You can start small, get that simple proposal down pat, have a solid system for it, make it a company standard. Boom, you got one system out of the way. You don't have to worry about that. You don't want these simple things to get in your way in the day to day. Spend your time now to make them better to eliminate future holdups. Remember that, like me setting something in front of the door for my future self in the morning? It's the same thing with building a proposal template. Or someone was just asking me, should I buy the internal systems website now? And my question was, well, do you have the money for it? And he said, yes. I said, well, then buy it because it's not going to be this cheap for the next couple of days. But he's like, yeah, I have the money, but I don't have a lot of employees. I'm like, well, that's great. You can get it now. If you don't have the money, don't buy it. Save the money and, build, and be careful with that. But then once you have the money, you can have that because then when you hire people, what are they gonna do? You can just point them to that superintendent page or the project manager page or the sales and estimator page and to have them take the quizzes. So, of course, you guys can buy that. You all heard about it and you, we did the whole thing on that. So how 
do we gain and maintain? And this is in closing. How do we gain and maintain true fulfillment? I feel the most sad and unfulfilled when I don't accomplish anything towards my North Star goal. It's so important to find that North Star goal, that purpose for your life, that passion, that light beam that I talk about. Everyone here on, per on earth has a purpose. I believe you can find that thing that's, that's burning inside of you. It just needs to come out and it needs to be alive. So for me, this was growing my construction business, investing in real estate and helping others like you guys along the way. So when I'm successful and I make progress each day towards this life venture that I set out to accomplish, I feel the most fulfilled. Don't you guys feel fulfilled at the end of the day? Like when you come home and you're like, man, I just accomplished so much, but I wasn't just accomplishing so much in the wrong direction. You want to focus on your North Star goal. So this is not to say that there won't be major battles and obstacles. There, there, those are a natural part of being a human here on earth. But those struggles just make us stronger. Remember the circle of capacity? You're stronger, you're bigger, you're better when your circle grows and you can attack those problems that are larger in the future because it's within your circle of capacity because you know how to do it. When I was younger, I would often spend time playing video games or doing things that were meaningless. And I quickly learned as I got older that those things were completely depressing. We aren't built to be unproductive. I believe we're all put on earth here for a very specific reason. And when we find that, it's a secret sauce to living a truly fulfilled and meaningful, purposeful life full of happiness and true inner joy. Isn't that the whole point? Money helps, but so does health. Health, wealth, family, spiritual, the quadrant. It's all important. But when you find your North Star goal and you work towards that in the passion light beam, Work no longer feels like drudgery. I mean, it's hard, but it's not drudgery. I've been in drudgery, like when I worked at like Olive Garden when I was like 18, 19, when I moved to Iowa. That was drudgery. Oh, I need a, a fork. Oh gosh, you need wine. Oh my gosh, like <laughs> not what I'm built for. Okay, I quickly realized that after like a couple of weeks. So work towards your North Star goal every day and stack knowledge on that subject like the growth rings on a tree. Put your focus on reaching that goal and help others do the same. You're gonna feel even more fulfilled. That's why I'm so fulfilled. It's because I'm fulfilled over here, then I pass it on to you guys watching, and it's extra fulfillment because <laughs> I'm helping others along the way. And it's really the best feeling when you're able to help others. So laziness is the epitome of depression because nothing's progressing in your life. We're built to build, that's why we're contractors, build and accomplish so don't waste your God-given time. Progressing towards your ultimate goal brings true fulfillment and joy. So try things if you don't know what your North Star goal is. Set timelines to achieve them. Think bigger than you ever thought possible and watch what happens in your life. So thank you for coming to my first ever business conference. Cheers to many more. I love you all so much. Ask me any questions that you have about systems, people, business, God. <laughs> Thank you guys.